This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey! What's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving another Yu-Gi-Oh! comma tutorial video, specifically another World Chalice comma tutorial video for the potentialities of this deck now that we have access to Trigate Wizard, the generic be-all end-all of most of your combo sequences that you want to be getting into because it is an extra decked form of negation for your opponent's plays and cards and things like that. You want to be pairing it out with Firewall Dragon and, you know, itself, and you want to have it tri-co-linked uh, with, um, with, you know, three separate things. What I refer to as tri-linking, which is not an official term, but I just call it tri-linked. Whenever you hear me say or type uh, a tri-linked tri-gate wizard, I mean that it's linked, co-linked with three separate things, making its uh, third effect live. But, regardless, I decided to go with a little bit different structuring for this video to, you know, instead of starting the video out with, you know, a certain sense of ambiguity of just being like the cards on the table uh, that I'm going to be using for the combo sequence, I figured that while I'm talking through this intro sequence of the video, I could show you guys the ending board of the combo in particular that we're going to be covering today. And so, the combo we're going to be covering today yields you a plus seven overall, you end up with five cards in hand, it's a three card combo, you end up with five cards in hand at the end of it, and you end up with all these cards on board, you end up with twelve cards total to your name, because there are seven cards on field, and then there are five cards in hand, and this was a three card combo, so it yields you a plus seven. Now, what this combo is, this is a three card combo, as I've already said, and it is one of the few three card combos that actually yields you a Ningirsu draw three, and a Trigate Wizard play, and a Firewall Dragon that is live. This Firewall Dragon has not been used for this combo sequence, and it's a pure three-card combo. It's not a three-card combo plus some extra possible variables. No, it's 100% just you have these cards, and these are what you need to make it happen. So, with this ending board in your mind, let me rewind this real quick, and let me take you on a journey on how you get to this point, and with what three cards we are going to be using. And this combo is one of the ones that I mentioned in my video that I put up yesterday, if you caught it, and it is one of those three card combos that I mentioned that is Venus, Exodius, and Brilliant Fusion. This is one of the more powerful combos that this deck has access to, uh, and it's definitely something that you would like to know. Uh, basically, coming out of the out of the basics that I showed you in the previous video, we're, we're ramping up the difficulty level a fair bit in terms of combo sequence, uh, like identifying play structure and stuff like that. For this video but anyway enough rambling on i'm going to rewind this real quick get this set up and then we're going to start exploring how you do this combo all right so like i said this is a three card combo involving venus exodius and brilliant fusion it can also be venus exodius plus lee or it can be venus exodius plus world legacy world chalice but obviously some minor details change in terms of the execution but this is one of the more complex ones because of how you want to be using your brilliant fusion and the interactions that it you know gives you so this is the one that i wanted to show you guys first because why, why start small when you can start big, right? But anyway, so you're going to normal summon Venus, and you're going to use its effect paying 1500 life to summon all three of your Shine Balls out of your deck. And from here, we're going to take this in a little bit of a different, uh, different approach. Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is that most people would want to play the Brilliant Fusion first, get the Lee back to their hand straight away, uh, and do that sort of stuff. Whereas my particular play structuring, I want to get the most out of this Brilliant Fusion because I play Lazuli. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start going down the Venus plus Exodius route first, and then meld the play into uh, into an extending play past that point. So, uh, you don't really have to worry about resources whenever Exodius is involved, because he's going to reset everything for you. So, I'm going to link away with the first Shine Ball into a Link Spider in the extra monster zone, and that opens up a zone down here for us to activate Brilliant Fusion to summon our Seraph Knight into. So that is going to be the next step. So we're going to go ahead and get access to the Lee, uh, but we're going to be, you know, waiting on how we actually utilize it. But so, Brilliant Fusion is going to send Lee to Grave, and is going to send Lazuli, if I can find it. Uh, where is it? There it is. Specifically Lazuli. Lazuli gives you an extra card back. This is why I'm still playing Lazuli. Some other people play Garnet, some people, other people play other Gym Knight Vanillas. I, the way I see it, there's no reason not to play Lazuli, because you're never going to be wanting to draw the card anyway, regardless of if it's a vanilla or not. And at least Lazuli has the chance to have an effect. Most of the time you are sending it to the graveyard at the start of your turn and it has no effect. Uh, but at least it has the chance to have an effect to uh, benefit you, like in this situation. So Lazuli's effect will trigger and it will add back the Shine Ball that was sent to Grave for the Link Spider. And then you're going to use Lee's Graveyard effect to send the Seraph Knight from your field to Grave to add the Lee back to your hand. So 
you've gotten a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff moved around into a place where you want it to be at. But so instead of using Venus to pay 500, we're just going to use Link Spider because its effect is available to us, and special summon the Link Spider under it. So you still only paid 1500 off the Venus. So that's something to that's something to remember. But so then from there, you're going to link away with this Link Spider yet again, or the uh, Shine Ball that is under the Link Spider. Um, and you're going to link away with that Shine Ball again into an Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon, under the Link Spider. Uh, this is so that we can start doing our plays into getting into um, into getting into Orum and getting into our Ningirsu. The, thing, the reason I'm doing the play in this particular fashion is because I want that Ningirsu to be protected from Ash Blossom. Um, so, like, the way that I'm doing this is that I'm not going to be summoning Lee until I've Ningirsu drawn for multiple reasons. One is that it protects it from Ash Blossom, it protects it from a possible Ghost Ogre if your opponent has waited to not use it on the Venus, uh, and they wanted to hit something like the Ningirsu where you invested a lot of resources into that play. Uh, but then, also, you have the, uh, the capabilities of, um, of you draw three cards off Ningirsu, so it adjusts what your searches can be with Lee. Uh, so you can basically like really, really get down and dirty into what you're wanting this combo sequence to do for you. But so from here, you're going to link away with the Link Spider and the Shine Ball because they are different types and different attributes into Ebe, the World Chalice Priestess, up into your extra monster zone because that's all that's available to you. Then from there, you're going to link away with the Imduk and the Ebe into your Orum, the World Chalice uh, la, 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 Blade Master. There it is. I had to look forward to my extra deck. My extra deck is a bit unshuffled or a bit unorganized. Uh, which is not something I'm used to. Uh, but so, you could use Eve or Imduk here to summon Lee out of your hand, but we're not going to. Uh, it doesn't benefit us at this point to, to do that sort of a play, so we're just not going to. It just it makes the most sense not to do uh, anything like that right now. But so, what we're going to do is we're going to link away with this Shine Ball into another Imduk to just get it into the graveyard before we do our Exodius play. So you're going to summon Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon, and then from here, you're going to summon the Exodius, as in previous Exodius combos. You've gotten so many things in your graveyard that were just sort of sort of wasted resources, but not really. Uh, but it resets your Brilliant Fusion, it resets your Venus, puts your second Link Spider back into the extra deck, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So it really allows you to go very far. So you put all that stuff back into the deck and summon the Exodius. And then from here, you're going to pay 500 life points off the Venus to summon another Shine Ball. You're going to play this one slow. You're not just going to summon all the Shine Balls willy-nilly. Uh, you kind of want them to be in kind of specific places. So that's really uh, that's really the reason why. But so what you're going to do from here is that you're going to link away with the Exodius and the Mystical Shine Ball. Exodius uh, gets banished, and you're going to link those, because they are different types and different attributes, into the Eeb that was put back into your extra deck. Uh, so you still have one extra Eeb in your extra deck if you're playing too, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but then from here, you're going to use Venus. Now that you've got these zones cleared, now you'll go ahead and use Venus's effect uh, twice to get the other two Shine Balls out of your deck and going, and we go from there, essentially. But so what we're going to do from here is that we are going to link away with a Shine Ball into another Imduk right here, and then we are going to link away with Venus and Shine Ball here into Proxy Dragon. Now, the reason we're doing this is because I want to summon my Ningirsu here, but I want to keep the Imduk here to do uh, extra normal summon plays with after I get a search off of Lee. Because I've already used my normal summon this turn. I used my normal summon on Venus because I didn't play Brilliant Fusion first. So what I want to do here is I want to summon the Lee from my hand off of one of my uh, Imduk's graveyard effects. But I want the Lee to not be in this area. I'm using it strictly to mask my Ningirsu effect. But I don't really need it in terms of, uh, in terms of like the draw effect. The draw effect is already maxed out. I'm just using it to max it to, to uh, mask it from a uh, Ashen Ogre. But so you're going to link away with the Imduk and the Proxy Dragon, uh, leaving specifically this Imduk here, and you're going to link into Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior. And then from here, Ningirsu will be Chain Link One, and your Imduk that you sent to Grave will be Chain Link Two. You'll summon the Lee out of your hand over here, and you will get your three draws off Ningirsu because it is pointing to three World Chalice monsters. So now from here, after you've drawn your three cards, you get to look at your three cards, look at the other two cards that were in your hand, and you get to decide what you want to search off of Lee. If you drew into a World Legacy World Chalice, then great. You can just search whatever the hell you want with Lee. You can search a Guard Dragon, you can search whatever. It's pretty inconsequential. All it does is that it fuels your combos to have different results. But if you don't have World Legacy World Chalice, then at this point you'll use Lee's effect to search for World Legacy World Chalice. So... 
not taking into account what any of these three cards are, add World Legacy World Chalice to your hand. You want a World Legacy World Chalice in your hand after this is all over and all after all this is said and done, essentially. But so, from here, we're going to start linking up and doing our Trigate plays. Uh, specifically, we want Trigate to be where Ningirsu is, so we need to get rid of the Ningirsu, and then we need to start trading our monsters up for better resources because of how Aurum works. So, the reason we wanted Imduk over here was because we want to use an additional normal summon of the World Legacy World Chalice. And so what we wanted, we wanted the Imduk to stay on the board. Uh, so, like, you could have put an Imduk over here, you could have summoned the Lee here. It honestly doesn't really change a lot, but... What basically the way I like to do it is to keep uh, World Legacy World Chalice over here uh, for for particular reasons. I just I don't like to melt. I don't like to mess around in this area unnecessarily if I don't have to, uh, because that's when you can start introducing variations and introducing errors uh, like that you just mess up. So <laughs> things to consider. But so you use your additional normal summon, tributing the Lee, and you summon the World Legacy World Chalice. Now from here, you're going to link away with Ningirsu and World Legacy World Chalice on your board, and you're going to link those into a link for. You're going to link those into Firewall Dragon over here next to Eeb. And now from here, your World Legacy World Chalice is going to trigger. And this is the first point in the entire combo sequence outside of Brilliant Fusion, where if your opponent had Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, they could really actually hit you with it. But at that point, if you have other World Chalice monsters in your five card hand, or if you have just any other monsters to mess around with because of Firewall Dragon being on the field, it basically invalidates that sort of thing as being a threat at this point because you've gained so many cards out of it that at that point it's not really going to matter like you just you still get to force an ending board through but anyway your world legacy world chalice effect will trigger and if it resolves you are going to summon world chalice guard dragon here and you are going to summon chosen by the world chalice over here or whatever vanilla that you're running in your world chalice deck but you do have to be running a world chalice vanilla for these combos to work because you need to be able to have access to it for your link spider plays because we're going for an extra link here as you remember we're going for double link spiders and trigate and a live firewall so like it just it benefits you to be playing at least one of the best vanilla which is in this at this point it's chosen because you have access to e -Telly. that's the best vanilla right now but so this mduk is still over here and it's still being pointed to by orum so what we're going to do is we're going to trade up our resources, we're going to get another monster that can actually, you know, benefit Trigate Wizard. So we're going to use Orum to tribute the Imduk and bring back the Ningirsu, or the Proxy Dragon. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one you want to do, I always just prefer to go for Ningirsu because it puts pressure on the opponent being one of the best forms of removal your deck has. It also is worth more physically because it's worth three monsters for another Link Summon versus uh, being worth just one or uh, worth two with Proxy Dragon. Uh, so there's, th there's those things to consider going forward as well. But, so, what we have access to now is that we've opened up everything we wanted, that we want to do as far as melding our board. The Orm has been used. We'll link away with the Orm, treating it as two materials and the Guard Dragon that is below it to clear out the zone, and we will make the Trigate Wizard in between our Eeb and in between our Ningirsu. And so now from here, we can use this vanilla that's left over here, the Chosen, and we can link away with it into our Link Spider, specifically the Link Spider that went back into our extra deck off of the Exodius. So we never really lost any resource. Like, we, we reset the resource pool, and then we started using it again, burning through it again. That's how this works. But So from here, you have a couple different options. You can either use World Chalice Guard Dragon's Grave Effect to make this combo self-contained, or if you had another vanilla in your hand, the Firewall Dragon could trigger to summon it from your hand and do stuff like that. There's there's a few different routes. This this is very freeform at this point, but I'm just showing you like the bare basic bare bones of what you should be doing. But so we're gonna use World Chalice Guard Dragon's effect to bring back either Shine Ball or the World Chalice Vanilla in defense position next to the Firewall Dragon, and then this is going to allow us to establish our extra link. So you're going to link away with the Chosen in this case again into another Link Spider that is above the Firewall Dragon, and now from here, you have established what we were trying to do for this combo sequence. You have extra linked your opponent, you have a live Trigate Wizard that negates one card during your opponent's turn, you have a Firewall Dragon that can bounce two cards because it was not used for this entire combo sequence, you have three cards that you drew off in Gearsu on top of two other cards that were starting cards in your hand, so you have five cards in hand that are completely unaccounted for at this point, but then also, 
If you drew into Kyoto Waterfront, this gets better because you still have the slot to summon Gamma Seal, and Waterfront can be drawn off of your uh, Ningirsu, and it'll still be live to do your Gamma Seal play and all that sort of stuff. So you can make this board even better. It's very easy to do so, but... So this is what I wanted to show you for this video. We really sort of, I really sort of ramped up the difficulty in terms of trying to identify what you really need to be doing uh, in terms of trying to get the full value out of Ningirsu, which is to draw three cards and then make Trigate Wizard. And like I said previously in the other video, if you watched that, that becomes really hard to do with minimal amounts of cards if you're trying to do it self-contained without, you know, just saying, oh, I'll have four and five card combo hands, all that sort of stuff, so... This is what I wanted to show you for this video. Uh, if you want me to do the uh, the other variations of this three card combo, then definitely I'm down to do so because the variations are kind of weird in terms of like what they like require you to do, uh, specifically in like when you use your World Legacy World Chalice, when you use uh, your Lee effect, when you do all that sort of stuff. Like it changes, and then the Soul Charge plays get absolutely insane now that Trigate Wizard is around as well. Like. This one card coming out added such a complexity and depth layer to this deck because your two cards that you're trying to make every single combo get summoned. They want to be summoned in the exact same place every time. You want to summon in Gearsu here, draw three cards, and then you want to move it out of the way and put a Trigate Wizard here. And that takes so many cards to do. So let me know what your thoughts and concerns are in the comments down below. If you have any questions, then I definitely ask away. I will answer them to the best of my abilities and all that sort of stuff. If there's any other combos that you'd like to see, then definitely let me know in the comments down below as always. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, links is always in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page if you want to support the channel directly. Patreon is the best way to do so, and you'd have my eternal gratitude if you would like to do that to show some support and help the channel grow and help quality improve and all that sort of stuff. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, Take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.